Hey guys, Alan here, AMH Knives. I'm going to go through today with the Centroid CNC12 and the Acorn board how to ball screw map your machine. So let's get started. Alright, a little bit about ball screw mapping. Um, easiest way to describe it is so the screw that runs along whatever axes you're moving, uh, it has errors in it. Basically, for manufacturing, uh, maybe the balls are a little different, but as the machine moves, the screw, the actual screw itself, is different all the way down, and that creates an error. And what you can do is with a piece of software in here, you can take, you can compensate for the error and adjust out a ton of it. Um, what I'm using today to um, map as my base is a Meet to Toyo. AT715 linear encoder and KA200 scale on it uh, mounted on my x-axis and just a little plate nothing too fancy uh, just to hold it in place it's been trammed in uh, leveled so it'll give me as accurate as I can make it uh, you can also do this with a dial indicator like a one inch dial indicator and every time you move we're gonna move in half inch increments every time you move you can set up the dial indicator move adjust, move, adjust, that way. I like to do it like this because I can do the whole rail one shot forward and reverse. Um, and usually what I do is I set up a little piece of G-code. It'll machine will automatically move half inch every five seconds. And what I do is I stand over at the, the digital readout and just hold my phone up as a camera and, and take pictures of every movement. And then with the pictures I'll go into the software and use that as my adjustments and then um, rerun it and make sure that those adjustments have changed the way I want to run the screws uh, and the machine. Uh, biggest deal with this is every time you either adjust or you're going to read you have to home whatever axis you're on. It has to be off the home switch and you want to have a good home switch this way home is the same every time. I use a uh, Metro switch. I'll just show you a little quickie. Their book uh, but Metrol's uh, based in Japan, and they uh, they make really really high end small precision switches, which I use for all my homes. Um, so every time I home, usually it'll be within you know one ten thousandth, maybe two ten thousandths at the most um, difference. Because if you have a if your homing switches are way off, you know you're talking five thou, something crazy. Which they can if you're just using regular little micro switches. They will be different every time. The switch doesn't hit the same way every time the machine moves. That will move your ball screw map, and in turn, you will not get you not clean up the errors in the same spots. You may change it. It may be off now because your home is not the same every time. The machine only knows where home is. If you move it and it's not home, it don't know where it is. The machine's not that smart. It doesn't have. I don't have. You know encoders and glass scales tell me where the machine is every time so you have to have good homing switches and it has to be homed when you do this so I'll slap the camera over I'll show you the little pieces of g-code I use and, uh, and I'll even show you it running and the differences between without this uh, comp and with the compensation on so let me move the camera and I'll show you alright so here's your Centroid software I've homed the machine I want to go into my setup, config, machine, and you'll see here F5 is M comp. That is your compensation tables. Uh, mine's a little pissed off right now, but when you get it, your tables will basically be nil. There'll be nothing here. It'll be, you know, half inch is a half an inch. Um, I've gone in and already mapped both my moving from home and then moving back and it gives it a difference so basically what you'll do is it'll move half an inch my DRO says that my machine only moved 0.4987 so you put that in and it gives you your correction and you just go through input all the corrections both the directions of the machine and it'll automatically uh, give you your correction factors and the difference and then you save it uh, once you've done that you don't have to go back go into your motor and you got to make sure you go over to screw comp and make sure you turn it on 
if you don't turn it on, screw comp's not going to work and you're not going to see any difference between how you started and where you're at now. So to set up what I'll usually do, I got little pieces of G-code. So I just throw them on a travel drive, it makes life easy. I have home. So it goes in and all it is is a M92 slash X space L1 and then it's an M26 slash X which is basically the little pieces of code that Centroid uses to home the X axis. So I hit the go, rehome the machine, zero it out and I'll zero my DRO and then what I do is I load my other pieces of code. First will be my negative five. Very simple little pieces of code here. All it is is a G 91 X for X axis minus 0.5 which is your half inch movements. Your second line will be G 4 P 5 which means it's going to park its ass for five seconds while well, you can take a picture or write it down and then it's an M 102 which will bring you which will basically recycle this code. So it'll move half an inch, wait five seconds, move half inch, wait five seconds. You also have to make sure that your limits are on this machine in the software. So if your machine moves 15 inches, you better tell the software it moves 15 inches because this will not stop until it reaches a software limit or you smash into your actual limits on the machine. So make sure you got that right. So then once I got that little piece of code installed, all I do is hit cycle start and it'll just move half an inch increment, five seconds. Boom, another half inch increment. And at the same time, I'm sitting at the DRO taking pictures of the machine moving at this time with it. So I'll move the camera over. I'll show you the difference before and after with the screw comp. All right, so this is my DRO. It's over here on my lathe, so I'm leaving it in place. But I'll show you, this is before ball comp, ball screw compensation or ball screw mapping. This is what the machine does before you do it. So these are half inch movements. I'll just show maybe like two inches of it move. But you'll see how off the machine is. So that should be one inch. That should be one and a half. And this should be two coming up. Alright, so this is now with the compensation on. So, you know, we're thinking one ten thousandths of an inch, twenty millionths of an inch, two ten thousandths of an inch. You know, you can still, this is one pass that I've tweaked it in, two ten thousand, one ten thousandth of an inch between where it is and where it should be. So hopefully that little bit of information, little bit of G code, there's not a whole lot to it. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to do this. Um, but it can make a huge difference in the accuracy of your machine and the accuracy of the parts that you can make with your machine. Um, if you have any questions on the G-code paperwork, uh, you can always check on Centroid's website or you can shoot me a little message on YouTube. Um, their tech bulletin for the ball screw compensation table is TR058REV2 and that gives you all the it gives you the g-code and it tells you how to do it this way um, so either you could be the guy that does it with the dial indicator does it with the linear encoders or you could go all out and you could do it with a laser interferometer if you want to go all out um, but uh, any way you do it as long as you take your time and do it properly you'll make a huge difference in the way your machine runs and the accuracy of your machine so um, until next time, I'll catch you later.